All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the linear and angular momentum for uh, deformable continuum bodies. Right, and in particular, we're going to look at the, at, at the, at the balance laws for linear and angular momentum for continuum bodies. Linear and angular momentum balance laws of deformable continuum bodies. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, look at these expressions. Um, we've, wrote, we, we've written out the main expressions before. We'll just put them down here and then go on. Okay. So for uh, for linear momentum, we have the following. Right. We know that L dot function of time equals integral over omega t uh, rho. Uh, v dot, but then we want to be careful about what we mean by V dot here, right? We really mean this material time derivative, right? Okay, it's that quantity d little v, all right? And our uh, external driving forces come from the fact that we can have a body force, right, defined per unit volume, right, and we decided that we were going to use that symbol for body force, right, per unit volume, dV, plus the effect of the external tractions, okay? So that's the surface of the body, and over some subset of that surface, we could be applying tractions on the body. And we had decided to use just the symbol T for tractions, um, also taking care to note that we would always uh, call it out as a vector and therefore not get confused about it and the, and our uh, symbol T for scalar time, okay? So this, this, this is what we have. And um, so in terms of the of the reference and continuum and, and, and uh, current configurations, this is what we have, right? So this is the reference configuration. We have a deformation, the motion. We have the current configuration, omega sub t. We have position of uh, the spatial position of a point. And uh, right, so, so, so now if we look at a little um, element here, Right? On this element, there is a force which we've denoted as BF. Right? This is our body force. Now, let us suppose that this is the subset of the boundary on which we are going to specify tractions. Okay? So, at a point, we have the unit outward normal. Okay? and a traction vector, all right? So here is the corresponding picture. Basis, reference configuration, current configuration, okay? In this current configuration, uh, you know, at every point, uh, at every little volume element is experiencing a body force, and in this case, we know that there's a force of gravity, right? So it's there, okay, on every little body, on, on every little volume element. That is BF in this case. Um, now, we may say that over some subset of the surface, let's suppose the blue part of the surface, right? That is our traction boundary, okay? So over that part of the boundary, we know that at every point we have a normal, right? A unit outward normal, okay? Now, that may be the normal, but then at that point, we could have a different 
a differently aligned traction vector, okay, such as this pen, which I believe, yeah, you can see it. Okay, so that would be the, that would be the, so the arrow is the normal and the pen shows you the traction vector. Okay, so they do, do not in general need to be aligned. Okay, so this is the situation we have. Okay, um, right. Now, now, now that, th this is for the, for, for, for linear momentum, right? Now, for, for angular momentum, what we have is uh, the following. We have J naught dot right, is integral over omega t uh, x cross rho times the material time derivative of v d little v, okay, right, and that, that's what we compute to be the uh, the rate of change of angular momentum, and uh, we talked about how we have external moments that cause this rate of change of angular momentum, all right? So we write those external moments as arising simply from moments of the forces that we've talked about on the, in, in the case of uh, balance of linear momentum, okay? So those terms are x cross bf dv. Right, which means now every little volume element, uh, such as the one I've drawn here, uh, because of its distance from the of its position vector from the origin, experiences also a moment about the origin. Okay, from the body force, and then the next term is the same sort of effect on the boundary tractions as well. Okay. That's it, right? It's fairly straightforward to write it out. Okay, so what do we do with this now? What we do with it is um, something due to Cauchy, okay? And we're going to look at a, we're going to take another look actually at Cauchy's theorem. Doubtless, one of many Cauchy's, one of many theorems due to Cauchy. Okay, but the, but what we want to look at here is is the following idea. So, we have the body, right? And I'm going to show it to us in our um, current configuration, omega sub t. And like we did there, we say that okay, this is our boundary subset where we have tractions externally applied, right? That is the unit outward normal at a point, and let's suppose there we have a traction vector. Okay, and that traction vector is a force per unit area. All right. Okay. So, uh, what what Cauchy realized is that well, I have two vectors there, t and n. Right. So t. Uh, sorry, t belongs to R three. Is The traction vector is the traction, uh, and it has uh, units of force over area, right? Force per unit area, all right? And of course, N also belongs to R3, right? And uh, we, what we have here is norm of N equals 1. It's, it is the unit outward normal in this setting. All right, um, and and then of course Cauchy said, well, you know, by by, by just the definition of linear transformations, uh, he said that basically Cauchy's theorem is that once you have this, you know that there exists uh, a tensor sigma which belongs to GL three in general, right? It's 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 a tensor, and uh, it's it's essentially a linear transformation, right? Um, such that ST for such that. Uh, sigma acting on N gives us T, okay, right? Uh, and essentially, the, the idea is that in terms of the physics, the idea is that as you now approach the surface of the body from inside of the body, when you come to the surface actually, you know that there is an orientation given to us by the normal, 
and there is a traction vector there, right? So Cauchy's uh, physical insight was to say that there is something happening in the body, there is some sort of force response that the body produces in order to balance that traction, okay? And because the traction and the normal are both vectors, this, whatever this object is, uh, this physical object is, it has to be a tensor, okay? So this, this basically is, is, is Cauchy's, uh, Cauchy's theorem. The point is, though, that it, it is also applicable to any arbitrary mathematical surface that we may draw within the body, okay? So if I say now that gamma, right, Gamma is a, is, is a surface within the body, right? So um, what do we say? So gamma is a surface, right? Um, uh, gamma is a surface and it belongs to, the, it, it's, it's within the body, right? So every point on gamma uh, also belongs to the current configuration of the body, okay? There are more formal formal ways to write it, but, 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 I, but I'll just stop here. I, I won't do anything more with writing it, okay? So now, now the point is Cauchy's theorem can also be, can equally be applied here, okay? So once we know this, once we know that's, that if you give me a normal direction, right, okay? Essentially, what Cauchy says is that, well, on this side, there, there is, a, there is a, a, a tensor, right, that he denoted sigma, okay, such that now when this tensor is made to act on n, you get some vector, right, which is now the traction vector across that surface drawn within the body, okay? So this holds in that case as well. All right, and what this simply means is that in addition to the fact that when we have this, uh, you know, we have the normal and, and, and attraction vector on the surface, right, we have those two on the surface, on, on, on the actual external surface of the body, we could equally think of taking a cut through the body, right, an imaginary cut. We don't actually, we don't actually separate the body, but we say, well, I can draw a mathematical surface, right? That surface has a unit normal, right? Well, he says that, this, this object that called called the stress, when it when it when it, when act when it acts upon that unit normal inside on on the on the surface inside the body, also gives us a traction vector across the surface. Okay, so this this holds in general, and and what what this does is that it allows us to define the stress uh, in the body not just as we approach the, the the external surface of the body, but really everywhere. Okay, so. Uh, so, so essentially from this one can conclude that um, uh, there exists sigma uh, such that sigma n equals t where n is the unit normal to gamma belonging to omega naught. Okay, I should pro actually I should better write gamma as being a subset of omega naught and it's not a vector or tensor of course. Okay. All right. So, so essentially there exists a, 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 a sigma such that it, it satisfies this condition uh, for, for any surface within the body. Okay, so this basically implies that sigma uh, exists everywhere in omega naught, right? The stress exists everywhere, okay? It may be zero in some cases, right? But, but it exists, all right? And, and, and this object, sigma, is what we call Sigma is what we will henceforth call the Cauchy stress, okay? In the context of uh, engineering terminology, this, thing's, this is also sometimes called the true stress, okay? And note that, uh, that the stress, uh, that the Cauchy stress is defined on the current configuration, okay? So this, this is defined 
on uh, omega sub t, right? It is defined fully on the current configuration, okay? And because of this particular definition involving n and t, it is also thought of as the stress uh, which is defined as a force in some given direction per unit current area, okay? So defined on omega t as force per current area, okay? So we have a stress, all right? Okay, so how do we how do we use this now? Now what we do is let's let's go back and look at our linear momentum, right? Our balance of linear momentum. So consider balance of linear momentum. Okay? And I'm going to write it out now in, in, in the integral form, integral over omega t, rho um, material time derivative dv equals integral over omega t um, bf dv plus integral over the traction boundary subset t dA, okay? Now, this is, this is our balance of linear momentum in integral form. We want to bring it down to a pointwise form, all right? Now, that would be straightforward enough to do if only all three integrals were over the same domain. Okay, and furthermore, since we want to have uh, we want to have some version of linear of the balance of linear momentum that holds pointwise, what we need to do is work with that um, with with that term which which arises at the at the traction boundary subset, right? We want to convert that in some way to a volume integral. Okay, so what we do is to first observe that due to Cauchy, uh, we can write this as uh, integral over omega t, the first term remains the same, right? But for the second term, we're going to make the substitution and say that, well, we can replace the traction there with the Cauchy stress acting on the normal, okay? Now, in the next step, we're, we're going to apply the Gauss theorem, okay? The Gauss, Gauss's divergence theorem, okay? Remember, Gauss's divergence theorem is applied to, uh, it essentially gives us a relation between uh, these types of uh, surface integrals and volume integrals, right? And, and, and that happens through the divergence operator, okay? So essentially what Gauss's theorem tells us is that, of course, the first term remains the same, right? Gauss's theorem does not address the first term at all. But what it does with the second term is that it converts it to an integral over the body, over the entire volume, right, of uh, the divergence of sigma dv, okay? Right, so now what we have is integral over omega t rho partial of V with respect to T. Well, it's not the partial time derivative, it's the material time derivative, okay? What I'm going to do just for clarity is rewrite uh, Gauss's theorem uh, in uh, coordinate notation, okay? So this result comes to us from, Gauss, from Gauss's divergence theorem. Okay, so in coordinate notation, here is what we have. Okay, coordinate notation for, for Gauss's theorem, right? Okay, 
okay. Uh, so, we have integral over partial of omega t, right, the traction subset. Uh, we have sigma uh, ij nj dA, okay. The, the divergence theorem is that this is integral over omega t sigma i j comma j dv okay all right so once we have this what we can do is uh, we've now rewritten our uh, balance of linear momentum it's still in integral form but now we observe that we've managed to bring everything uh, into an integral over the same domain, right, over the body domain, right, over omega t, or over the entire volume of the current configuration, okay. Now, um, let me just uh, pull everything to the left-hand side so that we can write it clearly as a single integral, right, integral over omega t of rho, material time derivative of the velocity, minus diver, sorry, well, it's okay. Let me, let me write, write this as minus divergence of sigma first, minus body force, okay? All of this dv equals zero, okay? And that's a zero vector, right? Because this is now everything's a vector here. All right. Now, uh, what happens is that because of the form of Cauchy's theorem and because of the fact that we have the stress defined everywhere in the body, we could have equally written out this uh, form, this integral form of the, uh, of the balance of linear momentum for a subset of omega t, right? And I'm going to call it omega t maybe tilde, okay? Here's why. It's, it should be clear that if we consider now the rate of change of linear momentum of this little subset, what we would have is on the left-hand side, we would have started out with an integral over omega tilde, omega, omega t tilde, rho times this, mar, this uh, partial time derivative, okay, right? And then that would have been balanced by the body force acting on just over that little uh, subdomain, right? So we would have picked up uh, we would have picked up the minus BF here. Now remember, we talked uh, on the previous slide, or maybe two slides ago, about how this now would would act as the surface of this little subset of the of the body, right? And across that surface, we would uh, uh, Cauchy's theorem would continue to work for us. Okay, so this would allow us to say that yes, there is indeed a sigma lying inside here. Okay, and across that surface of the subset omega t tilde, we would have applied Gauss's theorem. Okay, that application of Gauss's theorem would have would have given us in this expression here a minus divergent sigma. Minus divergence of sigma. Okay, so all those arguments hold equally over an arbitrary subset omega t tilde, okay, of omega t. So this, sorry, this is equal to zero as well for all omega t tilde subset of omega naught, uh, sorry, of omega t, okay? But if this this mean if, if 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 this holds, it means that we can now shrink this arbitrarily to a neighborhood of arbitrarily of of, of essentially of uh, arbitrary size, right? About any point x. Okay. So in fact, I'm going to denote this uh, here as a neighborhood around a point x. Okay. And this leads us to the conclusion that this integrand has to vanish at every point x. Okay, because of the fact that it holds for an arbitrary subset and that we can make that subset as small as possible, 
okay. So, the idea is can shrink omega t tilde, okay, to uh, uh, arbitrarily small but non-zero volume, right, about any point x. Right? And because of this, what we see finally is that we arrive at a pointwise form of our balance of linear momentum. Okay, and this is our pointwise form, and importantly, this holds for all x belonging to omega t, all right, okay. And this is essentially our pointwise form of the balance of linear momentum, okay, because I have said clearly that it holds at every point x, 